Hello everyone, this is Jimmy Young with a short presentation on trading psychology. I actually have three things I'd like to do. I'd like to give you my own take on trading psychology. I'd like to introduce you to three famous trading psychologists. And then I got a short list of books that are, they're my favorites, and perhaps these are books you might want to think about reading yourself. So here we go. The whole thing should take no more than three minutes. Let's get started. My own personal take on Forex trading psychology, in particular Forex trading psychology, uh, is you have to know the Forex market. And you have to set modest goals. I think if you truly know what you're doing, you truly understand the Forex market, how it works, and the goals you're setting are very modest, very reasonable, very achievable. I think you'll be fine. I don't see why you'd get nervous and have all kinds of problems trading this trading this market. I think people run into trouble because first of all, they just don't simply simply don't know what they're doing. So, you know, when you trade it's like it's it's a straight out bet. It's either yes or no, get it right or get it wrong. So, you wouldn't you wouldn't go and, and apply for a job as a bus driver and say, yeah, I know how to drive a bus if you've never driven a bus before because you know as soon as you get in that bus, you're going to have problems. Um, but, but in trading, that's exactly what people do. They just expect to be able to go in there and not only be able to drive a bus, but be able to drive it super fast and not make any mistakes. And that's just totally unreasonable. And I think in trading, it's that's really the same kind of a problem. People jump into it, and they really don't know what they're doing, and they're expecting tremendous profits immediately. So the whole idea is slow down, really learn what it is you're trying to do, truly have some skill, some knowledge, some kind of an edge, and then set very, very modest goals. You know, achieve something before you start looking for perfection and huge profits, etc. So I'm going to, so as I said, that's it for me. I'm going to introduce you to three guys. You may or may not have heard of them. Mark Douglas. And what I did was just pick three uh, free articles, articles that you could just pop off the internet and listen to or read. Uh, I did three for Mark Douglas. I did three for a guy named Brett Steenbarger. He's also uh, he's also very 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 well known as a a forex trading or not a forex but a trading psycholic psychiatrist. And I found a few a few of his articles, and I figured you know uh, again just to get a feel for these guys. And again, it's all free. These are just articles I took off the internet. Not none in particular. And last is Van Van Dopp, also very famous. And I found a few free things about Van Dopp. Uh, all of these guys, of course, have, have books or paid services. But just to get a feel for them and get some ideas about trading psychology, this would be a good start for you. Of course, if you liked in particular any one of these guys, or if you liked me, Jimmy Young, of course, you could go further with it. Now, my last thing I wanted to show you is my personal trading book recommendations. First of all, I've been in the business 30-odd years, and I've always made it my business to try to read at least one book every week. So I've read literally hundreds and hundreds of trading books, and this is my short list. These are my favorites. Uh, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. This book is about what it would be like if... All the, all the really talented people in the world all stopped performing and kind of all moved into their own little commune. How the world would just kind of fall apart without the so-called capitalists, the doers in the world. It's a, it's a must read. It used to be a must read if you wanted to work for a, for a hedge fund. It was the first thing they would give you to read. They would say, read this book because uh, capitalism is good. <laughs> Uh, from there, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, clearly my most favorite book I've ever read about. 
that's actually about stock trading. It's about the 1900s, uh, 1910 to 1930 area, era. One great stock, stock speculator. And uh, just a really fun book. Really gives, it really gives you that love of the game. And as you can see, the prices of these books uh, from, from Amazon on second hand is very, very cheap. Uh, the Misbehavior of Markets, Benoit Mandelbrot. Benoit Mandelbrot came up with the idea of fractals. Every time you mess with your computer and you make something increase or decrease the size of it, that's a fractal, and that's Benoit Mandelbrot's doing. Uh, he wrote a book about the, about the financial markets when he was about 80 years old, and they asked him why he did, and he said because he could. And he kind of disproves the efficient market theory. I found it to be a fascinating read. And as I say, the price is right. Uh, Fooled by Randomness, uh, just a great book. Uh, Nassim does a really good job of explaining how the markets, to a great extent, are very random. And a lot of times, uh, it's more luck than anything, success or failure. So very interesting book. The Alchemy of Finance, George Soros, famous speculator, he explains, in that book he explains how he made billions trading, uh, trading against the, the pound back in 1992. At the time I was working for, for a bank, trading for institution. Uh, I made $300,000 that day. I thought I did good. Uh, he made billions. <laughs> so, there's always somebody bigger out there. Uh, Short-Term Futures Trading Systems by Jake Bernstein. I find that to be a very refreshing book. Uh, very uh, very down-to-earth and very well-written. And kind of turns a lot of the uh, typical trading tools upside down. Tip trading, the typical ones you see on a, a charting service. Turns some of them upside down, inside out. I like it very much. And the price, as you can see, very good. Uh, the last one, and the price very high, and, and the book itself is, uh, frankly, uh, very detailed, very boring, uh, very difficult to read for most people. Basically, what David does is go in and set parameters for all of the different technical indicators by saying, let's put some, you know, let's put some numbers to, to what a head and shoulders exactly is, and these different flags and pennants, let's try and really quantify whether these things actually work and his results and his conclusions are, are very interesting. But again, that's a very tough read and a very expensive book, so I, maybe you want to leave that one out for now. Maybe that's something uh, only if you're really interested in it, getting into it very deeply. So those are my favorite books. Uh, I, like I said, I've, been, I've read hundreds, probably a thousand trading books over the years. And these are my favorites. I'm always asked about that. So tonight, while I was looking at psychology, I said, you know what? You know, I find psychology, I find people just totally overdo it with the psychology myself. Um, I mean, basically, you know, getting nervous and all that is such a normal thing. Like when a fireman breaks down a, d a door and there's three Uzis pointing at him from drug dealers. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's a little nervous. I'm sure he, nobody can take that in stride, but it's that ability to do it anyway. Uh, it, that's what makes a trader. You know, of course, I still get nervous when I do trades, but I just overlook it and say it's no big deal. Uh, to me, the, the whole trading aspect, of uh, psychology aspect of trading is just an over, uh, it's just an overplayed thing. I think people make way too much out of it myself. Anyway, that's my short little blurb. I, I went a lot longer than I thought. Um, probably think about redoing it right now, <laughs> make it a lot shorter. But uh, if I don't, that's what I got. Jimmy Young signing off. Bye-bye.